Chapter 9 The Door in the Roped Off Tunnel Lana saw Dune immediately. He was reaching up to set a book back on its shelf. He saw her too. When he turned around and his dark eyebrows flew up in surprise as she hurried over toward him. Your father told me you were here, she said. Dune, I found something. I want to show it to you. To me? Why? I think it's important. It has to do with the pipeworks. Will you come to my house and see it? Now? Dune asked. Lina nodded. Dune grabbed his old brown jacket and followed Lina out of the library and across the city to Quilliam Square. Granny's shop was closed and dark when they arrived, and so Lina was surprised when they went upstairs and saw Eveline Murdo sitting in her place by the window. Your grandmother's in her bedroom, Mrs. Murdo said. She didn't feel well, so she asked me to come. Poppy was sitting on the floor, banging a spoon on the leg of a chair. Lina introduced Dune, then led him into the room she shared with Poppy. He looked around, and Lina felt suddenly self-conscious, seeing her room through his eyes. It was a small room with a lot crammed into it. There were two narrow beds, a very small table that fit into a corner, and a four-legged stool to sit on. On the wall, clothes hung from hooks, and more clothes were strewn untidily on the floor. Beneath the window was a brown stain made by the bean seed in its pot on the windowsill. Lana had been watering it every night because she promised Clary she would, but it was still nothing but dirt, flat and unpromising. A couple of shelves beside the window held Lana's important possessions, the pieces of paper she'd collected for drawing, her pencils, a scarf with a silver thread woven through it. On the parts of the wall that had no hooks and no shelves, she had pinned up some of her pictures. What are those? Dune asked. They're from my imagination, Lina said, feeling slightly embarrassed. They're pictures of another city. Oh, you made it up. Sort of. Sometimes I dream of it. I draw too, said Dune. But I draw other kinds of things. Like what? Mostly insects, said Dune. He told her about his collections of drawings and the worm he was currently observing. To Lina, this sounded far less interesting than an undiscovered city, but she didn't say so. She led Dune over to the table. Here's what I want to show you, she said. She lifted the metal box. Before she could reach for the papers underneath, Dune took the box and started examining it. Where did this come from? he asked. It was in the closet, Lina said. She told him about Granny's wild search and about finding the box with its lid open and Poppy with paper in her mouth. As she talked, Dune turned the box over in his hand, opened, the closed, opened and closed its lid and peered at the latch. There's some sort of odd mechanism here, he said. He tapped at a small metal compartment at the front of the box. I'd like to see inside this. Here's what was inside the box, said Lina, lifting the covering paper from her patchwork of scraps. At least it's what's left of what was in there. Dune bent over, his hands on either side of the paper. Lina said, It's called Instructions for Igerston, or maybe Igersman, someone's name. Anyhow, maybe a mayor or a guard. I just call it the Instructions. I told the mayor about it. I thought maybe it was important. I wrote him a note, but he hasn't answered. I don't think he's interested. Dune said nothing. You don't have to hold your breath, said Lina. I glued the pieces down. Look, she said, pointing. This word must be pipeworks. And this one, river. And look at this one, door. Dune didn't answer. His hair had fallen forward, so Lina couldn't see the expression on his face. I thought at first, Lina went on, that it must be instructions for how to do something, how to fix the electricity, maybe. But then I thought, what if it's instructions for going to another place? Dune said nothing, so Lina went on. I mean, some place that isn't here, like another city. I think these instructions say, go down into the pipeworks and look for a door. Dune brushed the hair back from his face, but he didn't straighten up. He gazed at the broken words and frowned. Edge, he murmured. Small steel pan. What would that mean? A frying pan, said Lina. But I don't know why there'd be a frying pan in the pipeworks. But Dune didn't answer. He seemed to be talking to himself. He kept reading, moving a finger along the lines of words. Open, he whispered. Follow. Finally, he turned to Lina to look at Lina. I think you're right, he said. I think this is important. Oh, I was sure you'd think so, cried Lina. I was so relieved. She was so relieved that her words poured out in a rush. Because you take things so seriously. You told the truth to the mayor on assignment day. I didn't want to believe it. But then came the long blackout. And I knew. I knew things were as bad as you said. She stopped breathless. She pointed to a word on the document. This door, she said. It has to be a door that leads out of Ember. I don't know, said Dune. Maybe. Or a door that leads to something important, even if it isn't that. 
But it must be that. What else could be important enough to lock up in a fancy box? Well, I suppose it could be a storage room with some special tools in it or something. A look of surprise came over his face. Actually, I saw a door where I didn't expect to see one. Out in Tunnel 351. It was locked. I thought it was an old supply closet. I wonder if that could be it. It must be, cried Lana. Her heart sped up. It wasn't anywhere near the river, Dune said doubtfully. That doesn't matter, said Lana. The river goes through the pipeworks, that's all. It's probably something like, go down by the river, then go this way, then that way. Maybe, said Dune. It must be, Lana cried. I know it is. It's the door that leads out of Ember. I don't know if that makes sense, said Dune. A door in the pipeworks could only lead to something underground. And how could that... Lana had no patience for Dune's reasoning. She wanted to dance around the room. She was so excited. We have to find out, she said. We have to find out right away. Dune looked startled. Well, I can go and try the door again, he said. It was locked before, but I suppose... I want to go too, said Lana. You want to come down into the pipeworks? Yes, can you get me in? Dune thought for a moment. I think I can. If you come just at quitting time and wait outside the door, I'll stay out of sight until everyone is gone, and then I'll let you in. Tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow. Lana stopped at home the next day, only long enough to change out of her messenger jacket, and then she dashed across town to the pipeworks. Dune met her just outside the door, and she followed him inside, where he handed her a slicker and boots to put on. They descended the long stone stairway, and when they came out into the main tunnel, Lina stood still, staring at the river. I didn't know the river was so big, she said after she found her voice. Yes, said Dune. Every few years, they say someone falls in. If you fall in, there's no hope of fishing you out. The river swallows you and sweeps you away. Lina shivered. It was cold down here, a cold that she felt all the way through. Cold flesh, cold blood, cold bones. Dune led her up the path beside the water. After a while, they came to an opening in the wall, and they turned into it and left the river behind. Dune led the way through the winding tunnels. Their rubber boots splashed in pools of water on the floor. Lana thought how awful it would be to work down here all day, every day. It was a creepy place, a place where it seemed people didn't belong. That black river, it was like something in a bad dream. You have to duck here, said Dune. They had come to a roped-off tunnel. But there's no light in there, Lana said. No, said Dune. We have to feel our way. It isn't far. He ducked under the rope and went in, and Lana did the same. They stepped forward into the dark. Lana kept a hand against the damp wall and placed her feet carefully. It's right here, said Dune. He had stopped a few feet ahead of Lana. She came up behind him. Put your hands out, he said. You'll feel it. Lana felt a smooth, hard surface. There was a round metal knob and below the knob a keyhole. It seemed an ordinary door, not at all like the entrance to a new world, but that was what made things so exciting. Nothing was ever how you expect it to be. Let's try it, she whispered. Dune took hold of the knob and twisted. Locked, he said. Is there a pan anywhere? A pan? The instruction said small steel pan. Maybe that would have the key in it. They felt around, but there was nothing, just the rocky walls. They patted the walls. They put their ears to the door. They jiggled the knob and pulled it and pushed it. Finally, Dune said, Well, we can't get in. I guess we'd better go. And that was when they heard the noise. It was a scuffling, scraping noise that seemed to be coming from somewhere nearby. Lana stopped breathing. She clutched Dune's arm. Quick, Dune whispered. He made his way back toward the lighted tunnel with Lana following. They ducked under the rope and rounded a turn, then stopped, stood still, and listened. A harsh scraping sound, a thud, a pause, and then the sound of an impact, a short, explosive breath, and a muttered word in a gruff, low voice. Then slow footsteps, getting closer. They flattened themselves against the wall and stood motionless. The footsteps stopped briefly, and there was another grunt. Then the steps continued, but seemed to be fading. In a moment, from a distance, there was another sound, the chink of a key turning in a lock, and the click of a latch opening. Lana made an astonished face at Dune. Someone had gone down the rope tunnel and opened the door. She put her mouth close to Dune's ear. Shall we try to see who it is? She whispered. Dune shook his head. I don't think we should, he said. We should go. We could just peek around the corner. It was too tempting not to try. They crept forward to the place where the tunnel turned. From there, they could see the entrance to the rope tunnel. Holding their breath, they watched. And in a minute, they heard a thump and click. 
the door closing, the lock turning, and footsteps once again, this time quick. A long leg stepped over the rope, and the person it belonged to turned and walked away. All they saw was his back, a dark coat, dark untidy hair. He walked with a lurching motion that struck Lina as somehow familiar. In a few seconds, he had vanished into the shadows. When they came up out of the pipeworks, they stripped off their boots and slickers and hurried out into Plummer Square, where they flopped down on a bench and burst into furious talk. Someone got there before us, said Lina. Dune said, he was walking slowly when he went in, as if he was looking for something, and he walked fast when he came out. As if he'd found something? What was it? I can't stand not to know. Dune jumped up. He paced back and forth in front of the bench. But how did he get the key? he asked. Did he find instructions like the ones you found? And how did he get into the pipeworks? I don't think he works there. There's something familiar about the way he walks, said Lina, but I don't know why. Well, anyhow, he opened that door and we can't, said Dune. If it does go somewhere, if it does lead out of Ember, he'll be telling the whole city pretty soon. He'll be a hero, Dune sat down again. If he's found the way out, we'll be glad, of course, he said glumly. It doesn't matter who finds it, as long as it helps the city. That's right, said Lina. It's just that I thought we were going to find it, said Dune. Yes, Lina said, thinking of how grand it would have been to stand before all of Ember announcing their discovery. They sat without talking for a while, lost in their own thoughts. A man pulling a cart full of wood scraps went by. A woman leaned from a lighted window on Gappery Street and called out to some boys playing in the square below. A couple of guards, in their red and brown uniforms, ambled across the square, laughing. The town clock rang out six deep booms that Lina could feel, like shudders beneath her ribs. Dune said, "'I guess what we do now is wait to see if there's an announcement.' "'I guess so,' said Lina. "'Maybe that door is nothing special after all,' said Dune. "'Maybe it's just an old unused supply closet.' But Lina wasn't ready to believe that. Maybe it wasn't the door out of Ember, but it was a mystery nevertheless." A mystery connected, she was sure, to the bigger mystery that they were trying to solve.